Okay, um, I want to tell you about a certain type of physics problem, that capacitor problem, where you um, connect and disconnect capacitors from a battery, and um, after you disconnect it from the battery, uh, you will um, pull the plates apart a little further, or maybe push them together a little further. I want to just show you how you do those. Okay, so um, let's just take a look at this one first. Okay, so we have a 2-volt battery. Sometimes batteries can have uh, more than one symbol that they connect. So that, that's um, another symbol for a battery. This is, again, the positive end, and this is the negative end, which will mean that the electrons from this plate will skedaddle over there, leaving this positive. And electrons from this terminal will come over here, making this negative. And remember, the closer these are together, the more they will help charge up the plates. Uh, the, more ch the, more, the closer that this plate is to this, the easier it is to coax electrons onto this plate, because these are helping pull. Okay, hey, this is a 4 microfarad capacitance capacitor. What that means is it can store, um, it will store four microcoulombs per volt. So this means for every volt it will store four microcoulombs. Means that for every volt that you put across there, across the plates, uh, for every volt it will store four microcoulombs. That's what that means. All right, so um, so anyways, we charge this capacitor up, and, and you might guess then that um, if every volt it stores four microcoulombs, it, there's two volts here, and because of the Kirchhoff's loop rule, if we go if we go up some volts and we come around here, we got to drop volts. So you whatever you gain, you have to take away because, you know, the voltage... At any point, say that point, the voltage at that point relative to that point, V at A relative to A is zero. So if I start here and I do my path integral and I go up two volts, then I'll come down two volts. And so I know there's two volts across here. And because there's two volts across there, I know that there must be um, eight microcoulombs then. Another way to do that is to use this equation, C equals Q over V. So therefore, that's the therefore symbol. Therefore, um, the Q is equal to C times V. So that would be um, C is 4 microfarads, which is a micro, 4 microcoulombs per volt, times um, 2 volts. So you see how that gives you... 8 micro coulombs. Okay, so um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, we charge it up. We're going to leave it connected to the battery. We're not going to, uh, um, it's going to stay connected. And I'm going to pull these plates so that they're twice as far apart. So if I pull these plates so that they're twice as far apart, what will happen um, to the following things. First of all, let's just figure out what will happen to the uh, amount of charge that's stored on the plates. Okay. Well, when I do pull them apart to twice the distance, um, it, because this this uh, is now, let me redraw this. So now this is twice the distance. Make it a little bigger space in there. So that's twice D. Okay. Well, um, that, if, if they're parallel plates, C is equal to epsilon naught A over D. Now, I didn't change the area of the plates, but if I put a, if I make this double, if I put a 2 here, C gets halved. So C, the new C, is no longer... Um, Four microfarads. It's two microfarads. It's not as good at storing charge. Okay, now how about the volts across it? Have the volts changed? Oh yeah, the volts have changed. Or, excuse me, the volts have not changed, and that's because of the Kirchhoff's loop rule. If this is still two volts, then this has to still be two volts. 
So the new voltage across it is still two volts. Now, how does the electric field um, be, of this relate to the electric field of the other? So um, let's see, electric field is sigma over epsilon naught between the plates, just like the E just outside of a conductor. And if you look, that's sigma is like Q over A. I'll bring the epsilon naught there. That's the electric field. Now, um, the A didn't change, but the Q did. So the Q, oh, we never figured out the Q. What happens to the Q when you do this? Well, if this goes down by 2, then the Q goes down by 2. So the new Q, sorry, I should have done that first. The new Q will only be 4 microcoulombs because um, you'd multiply 2 microfarads times 2 volts. C times V is the Q, and so it's only 4 microfarads, or coulombs, rather. Okay, now um, notice then that the electric field, the Q got halved, so the electric field gets half. So the electric field of the new is half of the old. It's not as strong. Hey, um, if that's true, then how can the voltage be the same? How can these be the same? Well, it's because of the dot product. So the voltage is the integral of E dot dr. And in the second one, this is halved. When we change that, we halved E, but the DRs um, are, you're going to have twice as many. And so, it, you know, ED, the E gets smaller, but the D gets larger. That's how voltage stays the same. Okay, that's one type of problem. Okay, now let's take a look at a different type of problem. Now we're going to charge up a capacitor, same system. But this time we're going to disconnect it from the battery and then pull these apart. Okay, well that's a different story. When we disconnect it from the battery, what we do is uh, we take away the ability for the charge to leave the capacitor. I'll say that again. When you disconnect this from the battery, you take away the ability for the charges to leave. So the charge stays the same. So if I pull this apart, when I pull this apart so that it's much further apart and they're disconnected from the battery, well, let's see what happens. Um, first of all, the charge of the new has to equal the charge of the old. And that's because um, it, the charge has nowhere to go. Um, now, the, <clears throat> the capacitance has changed, though. The capacitance um, of the new is only half of the old. Um, and that's, I'm just reasoning that with, with this equation. Okay, so the capacitance has changed. Now, that means that the voltage, since voltage, is, let's see, if C equals Q over V, V equals Q over C, and the Q stays the same, but the C goes down by half, that means the voltage goes up. So C or the V nu is going to equal twice V old. Okay, uh, what about the electric field? The electric field of the new should be the same as the electric field for the old because um, the electric field is sigma over epsilon naught and the charge density is not has not changed. So if the charge density has not changed, then this has to be the same as before. So why is the the old so much bigger? Uh, why is the new twice as big as the old? Because if we do the path integral again, since the E doesn't change, this, do, this, this doesn't change for this this time. But the DRs, you have twice as many. So that's why you get twice the voltage. Okay, so you have to take into consideration, is it connected to the battery or not when you separate those plates? It matters. One of them, the voltage stays the same. The other, the charge stays the same. Bye.